Did you caught it? Yeah. With your bare hands. <laughs> I caught the lizard with my bare hands. <laughs> it doesn't look too happy. I'll release him into the wild. Come on, little lizard. <laughs> Hopefully that's the last one. Woo! You're watching the Green Dream Project. Jim here. Jessica. Now, if you don't know, we live off-grid in Southeast Arizona. We're about to build our own off-grid house out of earth bags. And then we decided we needed water. So what did we end up doing? We built a huge cistern out of earth bags. One, we needed water. Two, we decided to go with earth bags because we wanted to practice for our house, right? We got a lot of practice. We got a lot of practice. So we got this massive cistern finished now. And what's the cost of this? What's the cost of doing something like this on your own, by yourself? Is it worth it to do something like this versus just going out and buying something? Let's break down the cost. Let's break down the man hours. Let's see what went into this thing. So first off, I mean, we just started with a, basically a big hole in the ground. We put a layer of sand down at the bottom, covered that with a couple of tarps. Two tarps covered the entire bottom of the cistern. $25 each, so $50 for the tarps. After that, we built walls with just bags of dirt. That's basically the, the skeleton of the whole cistern. Even though the earth bags were a large portion of the material that we used for this build, it was not the most expensive part of it. I mean, mostly because what we used to fill it came right here from our land. Best thing to use to build is right from your own land. Now we used just under 600 bags, right? How many bags was that total? I think 589. 589, there you go, specific number. 589 bags to build this cistern wall. Now it goes five feet deep, three feet above ground. It was a total of like 19 courses of bags. So each bag was 20 cents. So that's a total of $117.80. Woo! I like the price of that so far. <laughs> <laughs> now for every course of earth bags you do, you wanna throw in some barbed wire to help keep everything stabilized. You can usually find two different thicknesses of barbed wire at your uh, local supply store. But we want with the thicker gauge wire, like if you're building a house, a cistern, you want the thicker gauge four prong barbed wire. And that really, it acts as a Velcro mortar between your rows of bags, adds that tensile strength. It's really important. How much did we have for that? We only use about one and a half rolls of that barbed wire. They're $80 each, so. $120? $120. <laughs> Gotta do the quick math. <laughs> now, at some point, we did throw in some rebar uh, to tie in some of the below ground portions to some of the above ground portions. But we also threw in some rebar in the upper hand portion just to tie things together. Tie into the gabion, tie into the roof. the roof. And add structural support to the bags. So how much was our rebar cost? So all together for all the pieces of rebar we had, that was about eight pieces of 20 foot lengths of rebar, half inch diameter. That came out to 92.80. Not bad, not bad. Now probably the most expensive part of this build was the line. Now there are other ways you can build or line a cistern. There's ferro cement. But with earth bag building, we just weren't positive if that would hold up over time because the earth might shift and move and uh, the ferro cement wants to stay solid. So there could have been some cracking. We decided to go with the liner because it was quicker, easier, and honestly, it might not have been that much more expensive. So what was the cost of the liner? Okay, so how big was that liner? That was like 24 feet by 24 feet. And that was $1,300. Ah! 
Oh! That was the single most expensive yeah. item for the build. For sure. So now once the liner was in place, well, you got to get the water out, right? So we had to put a hole in the uh, liner, which was frightening. Put in a bulkhead. Bulkhead, how much was that? Just over $9, nine twenty nine. Nice, not bad. And that's gonna eventually get piped into our house. Going right to the house. Then we kind of ran into an issue. What was the issue? So since we have part of the cistern above ground uh, and we weren't sure how much water pressure the earth bags could take, we wanted to make sure that it was well supported. It's only three feet above ground, but we wanted to make sure everything held together nicely. So why not build a gabion, right? I think this was a great addition for a number of reasons. One, structural stability. Two, makes it look extremely cool. And three, we used it to build the, uh, the gutters on top. And it also saved us from having to plaster or put something over the liner and the bags and so that was all well protected. Yeah, we would if we didn't do this we would have had it done on earthen plaster and it's kind of debatable which one was more or less work. The earthen plaster probably would have been cheaper with the extra stability. I think for the price for this, well worth it. All the rocks that you see, those were all free. We have plenty of rocks around here. That's one reason that we decided to go with that. But we did have to buy this remesh, which is this wire cage going around the rocks. We only used one roll and we found that for $120. Now that's just one thing I want to point out with that. If you go to a big box store, Home Depot, Lowe's, usually you're going to pay $150 for that kind of thing. That's why you got to shop around, even some of the smaller stores. Found this at our local hardware store, $120. What a great deal. Save that money where you can, y'all. After we got the Gabion in place, it was all about getting this covered, getting this sealed. But we ended up deciding to use wood to add structural support for a ferro cement roof. I ended up going out and getting fairly long pieces of uh, two by tens, 20 foot, 16 foot, and 12 foot lengths. For the 20 foot length, that was 116. The 16 foot was 46, and the 12 foot was 36. Just under $200. And this was untreated wood, but we did our own treatment. Shasugi ban, y'all. And that should help it last and protect it from the moisture. So after the wood, the ferro cement top, which was stucco mesh. We used quite a bit of stucco mesh. Uh, I recommend four or five layers, especially if you're doing a roof like this. So we went max five layers. So we had to use four rolls of the stucco mesh. You can use chicken wire for ferro cement, but we found stucco mesh to be a lot cheaper. And again, the stucco mesh I found at this hardware store, much cheaper than the big box stores. Mm -hmm. Was that 150 feet? 150 foot lengths, three foot wide. And that was $60 a roll. So $240 altogether. What did we work out for the sand? Here's the thing. If you have a bunch of sand on your property, just use that. It's a little bit harder for us to find sand around here. You can find it in some of the washes and things, but yeah, we had to bring that in. We ended up having to get a bit of concrete sand. We brought it in for another use, but then we had a whole bunch of it left over. And we're like, hey, why not use it for the ferro cement? Works really well, mm -hmm. obviously, concrete sand. So we can get our sand from a local quarry over here. The price is really good for the sand. Uh, I think it was about $18 for a ton. Ah, oh, man. We probably used about five tons of it for this thing. Mm -hmm. So $90 approximately. How many bags of cement did we use for this thing? We used 14 bags of cement. We're trying to get away from uh, using cement for builds like this. I think we will probably use ferro cement in some future projects, but we're tr we are trying to limit the amount of cement we use in, in all of our projects out here. But 14 bags for this what was the damage. $140. Part of our roof is actually connected to the gutters, which is also ferro cement. And we just stuck pipes right in there to drain into the cistern. It's just basically uh, five elbows, five lengths of PVC that drain from right from the gutter into the cistern. And that was 
about 20 bucks. Seems like a lot. Seems like a lot of different things went into this. Some a little pricier, some maybe not as much. What's the grand total? Have you been adding it up at home? Let's give them the grand total anyway. So, grand total is just under $2,500. What? What? Ah! Sorry, what was that again? $2,500. Nice. $2,500 for this whole thing. What? Five feet into the ground, three feet above, eight feet total. 17 foot interior diameter. What's the outer diameter? 20 feet with the earth bags, 23 feet with the gabion. It holds nearly 14,000 gallons of water. And we can collect rainwater off the roof and the gutters themselves. Yeah. Now, in comparison, we have two poly tanks which are each 2,500 gallons, total yep. of 5,000 gallons, just a fraction of what this can hold. And how much did that cost us for both of those? $3,000. Under $2,500, we built our own uh, rainwater harvesting cistern. Honestly, I think one of our biggest things was maybe going a little too large with this. I think there's some things with the design, just because we were experimenting with materials, we had to do a little bit more I mean, ultimately, I think we're pretty happy with how it turned out. Definitely. But there's ways you can simplify it and probably save even more money. Yeah. So, I mean, you go out and you buy a tank like this, it could cost thousands of dollars. We probably saved, we probably saved nearly seven, 8,000 on a tank this size. Now, granted, this did take us, what, like a few months to build? Yeah, and it was, it was tough work. Three months of a very hard physical work. We've been out here probably been putting in a lot of 12 hour days. Obviously some days we weren't out here working on it. No, not every day for those three months, but it's a lot of work. You gotta take that into consideration whether you have the physical stamina to be able to take on a project like that. So for us, it was worth it. Uh, it was a lot of hard work, but we saved a ton of money and we'll have a ton of water out here available for our use. And we got experience working with the materials that we need to be familiar with for our future projects. Sometimes that in itself is priceless. So yeah, we hope this inspires you just to start collecting and harvesting rainwater. Whether you decide to build your own tank, whether you decide to buy something, completely up to you, but just get started. Even if it's small, just on about $2,500 for this, but it doesn't have to be that much. Absolutely not. All right, thanks for joining us. Man, what an exciting project. I can't believe this is coming to an end. There's still a couple things I gotta do. Uh, I still gotta put together a, a little hatch for that, but. And I gotta make it look pretty. I <laughs> just gotta make it look pretty. But uh, this one's pretty much in the books. All right. Keep on dreaming, Greensteaders. We'll see you on the next video. Bye. Come on. Watch him jump right back into the hole. <laughs>